All right, hey everybody, uh, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk about how I calibrated my crown graphic to shoot in stacks wide using the Loma graph lock back. So it wasn't terribly difficult to do. This is a range finder camera and it was in a nutshell as simple as just moving the front standard back a bit. But it can't just be moved back willy-nilly, it has to be moved back to a specific position. And so I will show you here the positioning that I had to do and kind of talk about a little bit about the method that I had to go through to get this uh, calibrated, so to speak. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on in. My advice if you're going to shoot one of these Graflex rangefinders in order to shoot in stacks wide with the Loma graph lock back is to use something like this or your spacer that comes with the Loma graph lock. This is a ground glass that I vastly prefer so I don't have to really stretch out my spring back. You go ahead and use something like that to go back and forth between your rangefinder and ensure that your focus is proper. What I've done here is put a second set of infinity stops. So when I pull the camera out, it stops at these. And you'll notice that it's actually really close to this rail here. It's almost exactly flush with that. So for some people, you may be able to use that kind of as a guide. And now if I want to shoot sheet film, I just move it forward to these infinity stops here. If I want to shoot sheet film, if I want to go back to Instax wide, I just go to these infinity stops. Now, my camera was a little bit out, and so I had to adjust the distance scale here. I had to make some adjustments to that so that infinity lined up with infinity and so forth. Oh, that's another thing to note. I made a paper mask. I marked off the viewfinder here with Sharpie after doing some tests. You'll want to put the camera on a tripod and I took a photo and then marked the spots about where it was and then, you know, took a piece of paper and put it in there and made that little mask for it. So that helps me with my crop lines for Instax Wide. I made this mask a little bit tighter than I needed to, but that's just to ensure that I get everything in the photo that I want. So the frame was a little bit bigger than this one and you'll have to do your own tests. In the weeks since making this video, my friend 3D printed a mask so that I could go quickly between Instax and 4x5 film. As soon as the files are available, I'll put a link in the bio. Here's some example images that I've taken with this camera. I haven't had it for very long, but so far it's been working really, really good. That's the thing with something like this camera. Uh, you're going to have to do some testing. You're going to have to focus in and out a number of times and check it against your ground glass so we've got you know the loma graph lock and you either use your shim or a ground glass unit like this there are a number of people who make these uh ground glasses for the loma graph lock and so i just you know checked focus on here with a loop and made sure that it matched up with the rangefinder, and you just go back and forth check infinity check something like 20 feet, you know, or you can go off of the markings here. So 25 feet, uh, 10 feet, six feet, and then the closest focus that the camera would do. And I would just check the range finder and then I would, you know, double check it against the ground glass to make sure that they lined up. If they didn't, I needed to adjust something. And sometimes it was as simple as infinity being a little bit off. So when you look for infinity, make sure you're looking way off in the distance. I've got some power lines that are really, really far away that I'm able to see from my backyard. So that was helpful. Then the next thing I did was the fence at the back of my property. Then a tree that was closer to me. And then I have uh, a barbecue that I put, you know, right at the closest focusing distance of the camera. When I rack this out, there's kind of a point where it stops and that's the closest focus of that rangefinder, and I focused on there. So you wanna get all those to be lined up and set aside an hour or a little bit more to do this and have yourself a pack or two of film on hand to do some tests and make sure that you've got everything set up. 
The other thing I did when I was doing my testing was set up uh, some guide numbers to use with my, my flash. And I mean, I'm by no means the expert of making guide numbers for your flash, but this allowed me a quick chart so I could be walking around and quickly be able to take some photographs using uh, an off-camera flash here. So that's been really helpful. Sometimes I, I don't really necessarily have the time to bust out a meter. So if I can ensure with my little focus scale that the person is six feet away and I've got a marking for six feet or eight feet or whatever it might be, or four and a half feet, I have one for the closest focus, then I, I'm able to get a flash exposure that I'll be happy with. Uh, I mean, knock on wood, everything's been going good and I've been really enjoying the camera. It's a great way to have a manual rangefinder camera that will shoot Instax wide. So um, kind of a brief little video here, a little less formal than maybe some of my other videos, but I uh, just wanted to put this out into the world. So uh, yeah, think more, shoot less. Be sure to subscribe and check out my website, my Instagram, Cinedar. I've always got something going on, one thing or another. I just finished a book project, so that's getting out into the world. And a quick plug, I've got 38 misprints of my book entitled Send It. So if you want to support my channel, support what I do, check out the link in the bio and go grab yourself a copy. So yeah, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Mwah!